extrude it three quarters of an inch, 0.75. All right, now we've got a part. That's cool. But this is not cool here. So now let's keep trying to move things and see if it breaks. It looks like it can get shorter. So what I might want to do is have a specific dimension here or have a specific length dimension for, for this. Even if I do a dimension on this one, I think um, it'll still have a problem. Oh, look at that. That's That lost its... Huh. Now let me redo that coincident here. That is weird. I need to extend this line out. Actually, I'm going to delete this coincident. And then I'm going to just put it at the end. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to delete this coincident here. Alright. Huh. Why can't I? Oh, wait. Cancel. Alright, so let's do that. That was very helpful. There was a little box here that said I had four entries selected, so I couldn't really select this one. So I needed to figure out what I had selected. So now I have this going at the end. Let's see what happens when I move it. Alright, that's that's okay. That's okay, but yeah, well, it's, it's good actually, because everything is moving in a coordinated way. And this is still moving away from here according to the two inches. I'm going to increase this to like say four inches. Yeah, that might work. I might be able to do more actually. Five inches. Yeah, that still looks good. Okay. So how do I make this a part? So I think maybe this extrude would work. So let's extrude this. Uh-huh. And I'm going to extrude it three quarters of an inch, 0.75. All right, now we've got a part. That's cool. But this is not cool here. I forgot to delete that side of the circle. So there's a couple things I could do. I can go back into the sketch, probably, and delete that and see what happens to the extrusion. Or I can undo. I am inclined to go back to the sketch. Usually when I in Inventor, if I just click on it, it'll give me little icons, but I don't see that. Let's see, maybe I can just go into this. Yeah, here we go. So now I can trim this and see what happens. I could break it, but we'll never know until we try. All right, so how do I get out of the sketch? I can press OK. Yeah, okay, well, that's Scott stop sketch. Let's try that. All right, good. And it worked. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so now I want to... Hmm. Generally with my CNC machine, I will take another one of these parts and I would put it in here. So maybe I can assemble or I can do a copy and paste of this. After playing around with these, I found a move copy. I'm going to try that just to see what happens. So I'm going to... Oh, look at that. Okay, I can move it, but can I copy it? Uh, no. Alright, looks like I'm going to have to go to the help. According to the instructions, I could just use the control C and control V, which is very nice, but I have to actually use the body select the body here. Okay, here we go. Control C and Control V. Alright, here we go. That works. There's probably a much better way of doing this. In Inventor, I would most likely as uh, create two parts like this and then I would assemble them um, with a certain Constraints. Actually, I don't see constraints here, so I guess it's under joint. Uh, so let's see. I'm gonna. No, I don't want to do that. I'm gonna keep it on the same plane. Turn it. I think that might work. Okay. 
So I want to cut these out on the CNC machine. Let's see how we do that. Looks like I have to press this drop down and go to cam. That's interesting. Animation, render, patch, model. Nice. All right, so cam. All right, let's see what we have to do here. Let's see, uh, 2D, that's clearing. We don't want that, we don't want a pocket. Face, no. Contour looks like it's the right one. Slot, nope. Trace, no. Thread, no. Bore, circular, engrave. Okay, I think it's the 2D contour. And I need to, oh, this is kind of cool. Spindle speed, I'm gonna go 24,000. Actually, 18,000. I'm not really sure if it's really important right now. Surface speed, okay. Ramp spindle speed. Cutting feed rate. This is millimeters per minute. I'm usually doing inches per minute. I think I ought to select my tool first. Is this geometry, heights? Oh, that's cool. So select my tool. Oh, look at that. All right, so I'm gonna do a quarter inch flat end mill. And the length is, is this all they have? Hmm. My flute length is considerably larger than that. Mine's 31, about 32 millimeters. So what to do? Maybe I can add another one. Okay, flute length, and diameter 6.35, and diameter, flute length would be 32, yeah, let's keep 30 millimeters, let's see what comes up. Okay, oh, check this out. Nothing. Oh, there we go, look at this. I'm going to use wood, let's see if there's a wood here. Uh, overall length, no, that's not going to work. And they don't have on shrewd here. Okay. So let's go to these samples. We should be able to make our own tool. New mill tool, and I can't do anything with that. Contour. Yeah. Flat. What if I just put the flute or the cutting diameter 6.35? Okay, so I have flute lengths of 19, but no more. I guess I will have to use the 19. Oh, I put in flat here. Oh no. Undo. Okay. Yeah. So all we have is 19, so I'm gonna have to use that. All right, well, this is kind of cool. All right, so the, I'll keep it at 10,000. Cutting feed rate of 1,500, and I need to ramp that up quite a bit. So I'm gonna go 3,000 here. And I'm gonna go a little lower than that, about 2,500, all right. And I have a single flute end mill, and I don't see... Generally, I put in information that have a chip load. Now, it looks like this is actually all based on the feed, or the feed rate. We're not going to have any coolant. What is this one? Geometry, contour selection... We already had this, right? Or no? Okay, there we go. And that one, too. Cool. All right, and uh, separate tangential end extensions. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I do want tabs, but not that many. Uh, I want to have triangular tabs. There's a little high. Where's my depth? I want to know where my depth is. Heights. Clearance height, 10 millimeters, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, retract height, okay. 
feed height all right top height bottom height okay the bottom of the model should be model bottom okay good that makes sense but I needed to go a little bit farther down so I'm going to offset it a little bit more I need to go the other direction can I go in the negative yeah good just so I get all the way through the part I think two millimeters is good so we got the bottom got the top the clearance Let's see where the tabs are the tabs need to be higher so it can actually be a part of the the part so let's uh, increase the height of the tabs let's go five I think that's a little bit too small so tabs should be maybe ten that may be too high no it looks pretty good actually tab width I'm gonna go with uh, about maybe 10 millimeters as well okay and I added tabs specific at points let me so I just instead of doing it by distance which have way too many tabs I'm gonna do it by points and I could change the distance say like 100 millimeters or 500 millimeters 200 millimeters so that would be actually pretty good but I'm not too confident that the positions that they're creating because there could be some material that just gets ejected and I want to make sure that that material doesn't get ejected and I have tabs holding in the the negative material as well so I'm going to do it by or at points I'm just going to put one here one here so I know that material is going to be held in place here and here so this material could be held in place and here and here this material would be held now I need a couple on the outside so I'll probably put one way over here over here over here and over here so I should have this pretty well held in place but not overdoing the the number of tabs rest machining I don't think we need to do yeah wrap tool path no tool orientation no, we already have no that's correct heights now we already did this the bottom height is looks like it's pretty good top height looks pretty good um, the feed and the retract yeah that's fine all right 